So I think if you're going to do the bar exam, do it right. <laughs> I really think go with Celebration Bar Review. And I think you took care of it all. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Hanging Out with Successful Bar Exam Students. And we have, I think, one of the most special interviews probably we're going to do in a long time. We're going to be talking to someone who has, I believe, one of the highest, if not the highest scores I've ever seen on the Uniform Bar Exam. I want to welcome a new member of the Mass Bar, Amanda. How are you? I'm doing well, Jackson. Thanks for having me. This is an exciting moment and congratulations. You didn't just pass, you killed the exam, didn't you? <laughs> yeah, I did not expect to um, score that high, but I guess I, I scored pretty high. <laughs> yeah, let's tell people what you did because it is remarkable, really. Do you remember your scores? Yeah, okay. So it was a 333 total which I've been told is an angel number. So it's like, good luck to everyone who's listening now. And the score between the writing and the MBA was pretty even. It was like 167.5, 165 point, like three or something like that. It was very close. Yeah. And folks, if, if you want to get a relative sense of this, the uniform bar exam, you can pass in some jurisdictions with a score of 260. Amanda got a 333. That is a remarkable number. Blue the Massachusetts number out. And of course, with that number, you can now be licensed if you want in how many states? Have you figured it out yet? I think it's every state that accepts the UBE. So it must be like 37 or 38 or UBE now. I think Pennsylvania's joining. Yeah. So yeah. 37 or 38 states. And this is a remarkable story. And I know that when people see those kinds of numbers and scores, they think, oh, it must have been a breeze and really easy and no big deal. But it was anything but that for you. It was a lot of work. We're going to talk about the journey. You and I had the opportunity to work together uh, and do some coaching. And I know you used a lot of the tools that we provide. But I'd like to go back and just have you tell our audience a little bit about your backstory and how you got to be in a position of sitting for the exam this year. Sure. So I guess I would consider myself a non-traditional taker. When we first, when I talked to you first about the course, I told you that I took the New York bar exam nine years ago when it wasn't the UBE. So it was just the New York bar and there was no UBE at the time when I took the exam and I moved from life took me places and wound up moving during the pandemic. And now my family and I are here in Massachusetts. So I found myself ready to have to sit for the bar exam. I had done like some legal work, some pseudo legal work and compliance work. And so none of that work is recognized because I usually get the question, why didn't she just wave in? She was an attorney for nine years and I did keep my license up, continued my CLEs, but if you don't do enough, like what they consider legal work, they, you can't wave. So I had to go ahead and sit for the bar again. So that's how I got to where I was here in the And when I first talked to you, you had a lot of trepidation about going back to take the bar after nine years out of, of that experience. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, so I had heard the bar had changed a lot. It'd been a long time since I sat down and, you know, studied contracts or criminal law and uh, civil procedure. I wasn't even on the bar when I took it. It was like when they were doing those test questions, I think. So that was another one that I didn't know anything about. And the, I didn't take secure transactions in law school, like some of the essay stuff. I hadn't even taken those subjects. So I was really nervous. Yeah. Yeah. And you, to say that you're busy, I think is a statement. I, I think I counted during our times, you had three or four different, really engaging things going on in terms of work life. And I don't even know about the, the personal life. Is that, am I accurate about that? Yeah. So I was working way more than full time. I was logging my bar hours, but also logging my work hours. And I was working like over 60 hours a week. I had a few part-time jobs. Like I said, I moved. So I've been trying to piece it together. I was teaching too. I, I teach online. So I have like students counting on me. It's just kind of wh where the semester ended up. I had to be teaching during that time. And as you mentioned, I did have a few major like family things pop up as I know many bar takers do during the time. Yeah. Full-time work more than juggling several different jobs. Yeah. And so when we first met, you came to me and you said, look, I got all this stuff going on. It's been a long time since I've taken the bar. I don't know any of these subjects. I don't know. Can I pass the bar? <laughs> and we, we decided that the best course of action for you was to do our basic plus course where you're going to work with me 
and do coaching calls specifically focused on your writing. Was that a helpful component for you? It was so helpful. I tell anybody who asks, the online community was really important to me when I was studying because, again, I was removed um, from the bar. So my friends weren't taking the bar. My, my peers are attorneys, partners, and things like that. Um, and so it was really important to me. The writing workshops, like having the accountability, and then also the style that you all teach instead of using IRAC. I personally, as someone who's taken New York nine years ago, and I, I know it's just personal, but that's why I'm here. And then taking the UBE, I think if I had tried to go into the old writing style that I was taught in law school, it's just very apparent to me that it wouldn't have worked. And one of the reasons I looked at your course was I had taken a few practice UBE essays and I was just like, these seem different. And when I looked at where I was supposed to be or model answers that people put out just didn't feel right the kind of writing style I, I was using. So it was so helpful to do the workshops. And again, to put this in context, you got a 165, 166, something like that. On the yeah. Part. So sometimes I hear people say, does your system work for the UBE? Yeah. I, I would totally say that. I'm not an expert bar taker by any means, but I think if you are teaching like the old way of writing, you're behind the curve. I really do. I think the way they've changed the essays now, just in my little experience of having taken New York when it was in the UBE and taken it now, I think it's really, it really is different. And IRAC probably does work for thousands of people because they use it every every time they take a bar, but it was really cool to write how you taught. And it was really calming. And I felt very calm on the exam that even when I didn't, quote, know the law, that I could write a well thought out, coherent answer. Yeah. You mentioned the word calm. I want to talk about one of the tools that we have that you took advantage of. We have a, a mindset coach on our staff, June, and she has a program called Calming the Chaos. And you signed up for that. Can you talk a little bit about what that was like? I'm a really anxious person and taking the bar really challenged me to have to deal with that anxiety so that I wouldn't get super sick or worn down. And I just felt like I needed the support. I needed somebody there for me. And yes, I have like friends and, and family that were there for me, but somebody that I wasn't like putting all that energy on that could help me through it. And that was like a trained person. June was wonderful. I guess it's easy for me to say like, if I failed or if I passed, when I was taking June's mindset coaching, I felt if I failed, I know I've grown as a person doing this course. And I think I even wrote that to you all beforehand. So I'm not just saying that now. Um, I really grew as a person working with her. And that was super important to me that it wasn't just this journey about I have to hurdle over the bar, as they say, but I became a better person, a more relaxed person. I just developed new tools of how to deal with stress um, and anxiety. And this is from someone who, my other background is a master's of social work. I've done a lot of things and, and June was June was great. So. Yeah. Well, and I'm glad that we can offer that resource. Uh, her program is, is individual coaching on mindset while you're going through the bar review. And so it really dovetails nicely. Another tool that I know you use for mind maps, and it was a lot of fun to talk to you. We'd be uh, going through essays and performance tests and I could see the room around you sometimes and I could see maps all over the place. Do you want to talk a little bit about my maps and what they are and how you use them? So yes, there was always things hanging and now I'm glad to say they're gone, <laughs> but they were fun to do. So I have to be honest, my maps is something I didn't start till about halfway through the course. And I totally regret it. I was doing traditional note taking because I had so many other things I was changing. And then my maps kept coming up in the coaching calls or in the weekly calls. And I did the videos that were like included in the course. You do a few examples. And I was like, this is really cool. And June talked to me about it. So she helped me get there, like using my creative mind. And I loved it. I I swear I would have had to work le way less hard if I had started from the beginning. So if you're listening to this and you're considering starting mind maps, I'm like, go for it. Start mind maps. I still remember some of my mind maps. I can see them in the back of my head. Hopefully that won't last forever. <laughs> but that's like how powerful they are. And I did a lot of hand drawing ones. You don't have to use like the MindMeister one. I, I was just drawing and I got like colored pencils and big poster board. And I revisited my mind maps and I added to them. And then when I knew stuff I had, I would move them to like different parts of the house or different where they were hanging. My It did look a little weird in here for a while, but 
it was great, a really great tool. And I had never mind mapped before. So I think that's another maybe important thing. I'm not someone who had, I was just a traditional note taker, the way they teach you in school, Roman numeral one, indent A, B, little I thing. <laughs> And I think the mind maps really started to bring it all together for you because there was so much information and you were digging through all of this. And as you started to mind map, I could tell that you were beginning to see relationships with information and how it connected and your writing, which was certainly good from the beginning, but got stronger and stronger because I think you started to really right from that deeper intuitive knowledge. I had listened to you from the beginning. Don't memorize repetition, but my maps really solidified that and took the pressure off. I don't have to memorize everything, but I can start to see these connections, know more holistically what I'm writing about, feeling more comfortable with the material just by working with it in different ways through mind mapping. I think that was great. I want to talk about the multi-state a little bit as well. Your score on the multi-state is extraordinary to get in the 165 range on the multi-state. Remember that there's, it's a 200 point maximum and rarely does anyone get above 165. It's almost a unicorn to get anything better than that. So you clearly understood how to do the multi-state, but we teach this method of selective intuition. Did you use that as you were answering questions? I did. Yeah. And I used that when I was practicing in the course. And I think before we met, I told you that I was just taking some bar questions to get back into it. And I was probably doing some sort of like hybrid of guessing or process of elimination or something like that before. But I was using the selective intuition by asking myself after each question, like what, what feels like the right answer and really just moving on. You'd given us like a 90 second time for each question. And I got myself like a little flip timer where you can just flip it over and do that so that I would really challenge myself not to sit there and think about what the answer is or try to do some sort of uh, process of elimination. I felt like the way that you taught us to attack the questions, again, kept me organized, kept me calm, kept me focused. And I was one of those people who left early from the MBE sections. I think I had 45 minutes to spare. Also, I have some ADHD runs in my family and I loved what you had to say about working faster really helps ADHD. It really helps me. And so a lot of people are like, how did you leave so early? Why did you leave so early? And I was like, this is just how I have to take the exam to get through it, to stay focused and to have the stamina, do all of it. It's a lot. And then just to, to be explicit about this, you were doing a hundred questions on the exam in two hours and 15 minutes. And there are a lot of people that can't get through a hundred questions in three hours and you got this extraordinary score. So yes, it is absolutely true that ADHD can be managed in this situation by moving faster, not by moving slower. So that was one of the things that, that we worked on and you certainly understood and, and embraced, I think, as you were going through the whole process of taking the bar exam this year, going back to in-person exams. And of course, nine years ago, you were in person. So you avoided the whole COVID period. But again, it had to be a little weird, right? Going back into a, a testing center now. Uh, we're, in a, we're in a new world of some kind, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, it was weird going back in and they had all these protocols and we would wear a mask the whole time. You coached us to practice with our masks. I don't know if that will still be a thing, but there's lots to remember. And of course you get all that anxiety beforehand and it's great to have tools to deal with that because they're sending you the messages. Make sure you have your COVID cards and your, you know, your, your bags with all your things in it and your water bottles with no labels. Just every jurisdiction has the things. It's different in every jurisdiction, but it was certainly weird. And it was certainly weird being in a, that was probably the first, it was February. So it was one of the earlier times where there were a lot of people. And you said, I'm in Massachusetts. We took it in Boston and Boston was like just lifting the, that you needed to have cards to get into like larger places, but we still had our, our cards the day of. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty weird. When, when the exam was over, the two days were over. What was your feeling? What did you feel like coming out of the test? I still always feel like people walk out of the bar exam. Like I have no idea like what happened. It's a blur. And I was really focused and I tried not to debrief any questions or think about anything after. And I know we got some guidance from you all after that. I think that I thought though, I had to have done well because I felt 
prepared. I don't think you ever feel fully prepared. You never feel like you did all the things that you wanted to do or have to do and things came up. I got COVID before the exam, like four weeks before, if you remember that. So my studying at the end certainly didn't go. I had to focus on like getting well. But again, I will say, and I think I wrote you all after the exam too. I said, I think we should all be really proud of ourselves that we even got here. Me and my cohort that was with me and with me on the weekly coaching calls. And that was really important to me that I felt like that because I will say I'm not a person that really celebrates like those kind of victories or really any kind of victories. I didn't even walk at my law school graduation because I was like, there's things to do, keep it moving. So it was nice to take a pause and breathe and feel like, wow, I did that. And so I don't, but I still don't think I was sure. I don't know if you're ever really sure. And I wanted to make that point because you got probably the highest score on the mass exam. And given that, and you still didn't walk out saying, oh, I killed this. And so sometimes people get this mistaken uh, notion that, that they'll know when it's so great you know, that they've done it. And the truth is you really don't know. And here's somebody who's got this extraordinary score and it's still, yeah, I don't know, not exactly sure. Well, let me fast forward. Results just came out recently in Massachusetts. Tell me about the moment that you found out. Your I was literally just looking for the word congratulations in the email, like trying to barely reading the email. I just saw it came through and I saw it and then I was like, okay, I took a big breath and then I read the rest of the email. It was definitely a sweet moment. It's a bittersweet moment for me, I think in many ways, which is one thing I really appreciate about your course, because I still don't think that but you did this big thing, you accomplished the bar exam. I think everyone should be proud of that if they did, but I still sit there thinking, is the exam really necessary? Do we have to do this kind of stressful, inhumane, inequitable exam? And that's just how I feel about it. I know there are a lot of people who had it harder than me, maybe people that can't afford a review course, people who are working or have family things come up. And to me, that's really heartbreaking. So I hold both those things, but I do love that your course created space for that. I love that your course is accessible. People are really there. It's affordable too. And so I'm not just saying all those things, like it really aligns with my values. So while I'm trying to find it in me to be very proud of it, I'm proud of everyone else. And I'm proud of the people in my cohort that didn't pass this time or people that I know that that didn't pass that are going through those things and knowing that the bar really isn't a measure of how well of an attorney you are. I'm sure there are many people who failed the bar numerous times that are better attorneys than I am. So I also keep that in perspective. I appreciate the words and I appreciate your humility. It's part of what makes you special, I think, Amanda. And we are very grateful to have been on the journey with you. We're certainly proud of what you've accomplished, but I, I think more than anything, we feel enriched by your presence. And I know that you're going to stay involved. Uh, you talked about group coaching and our community group, and I know that you're there and, and part of that. And I know that a lot of people are going to look to you rightfully so as a, a guru. I mean, maybe you should be teaching the course. <laughs> those, are, those are crazy scores, but, but I am, I'm very pleased that we were able to give you the space to be the best version of yourself. And that's really what we try to do and, and to approach non-traditional students and say, there's a place for you. And your recognition of that, uh, was very meaningful to our team. It, it really meant the world to all of us. I, I know that there are a lot of people who will be watching this video who will say, okay, but what's her secret? How did she get such a high score? Is that an answerable question for you? No, I don't. I don't think so. I think that I did. I want to say somebody said this quote somewhere. Maybe it's a quote in a movie. I have no idea. So I'm sorry that I'm plagiarizing or something. But if you want to learn how to fly, you find the best pilot and you learn how to fly. I think that I bought into this and I did everything you all said to do. Literally everything you said to do that was within my capability and the tools that I felt like I could use. And I went in and gave it my best shot. Some people have asked me, did you go to a T14? Like I didn't, I, I went to a great school. I mean, I went to Michigan state, but I think that they were ranked a lot, even lower when I went there. And so again, I'm nine years out. So I think if you're gonna do the bar exam, do it right. <laughs> I really think go with celebration bar review. And I think you took care of it all, right? Like the mental aspect of it. There is still this like mental game that I feel like the bar exam plays, whether it's intentional or not, or whether it's just part of systemic oppression that 
it's hard for people to get past. And your course really addresses that. I really do think that because you have the group coaching, you have the mindset coaching, and you're able to do like the writing workshop. So there is like someone there for you to address all that. So I guess if there's any secret, it's trying to fight that doubt that you, know, you might be doing things a little differently and you have ever, all the support you need in this course to do that. And then make sure that the course that you are choosing or the people that you surround yourself with are people that can get you through those things. And really, I don't really just mean be there to listen, but I really mean give you tools to be able to be your best self, just like you said on the day of the exam, despite anything else that, that's going on in, in your life, because we all have those things that are going on. Life is not going to stop for the bar exam. Yeah, that's a lot of wisdom there. Thank you, Amanda. I really appreciate you sharing your story and your time with us. We know that this is just part of a, a continuing journey for you and great success and, and great achievement for you. And we're excited about that. I know that, that your story will inspire a lot of people. And so we appreciate that very much. And again, our congratulations to you. We're proud of you and pleased that we could be part of the journey. Any last thoughts you want to share with our audience before we, we sign off here? No, I'm wishing you all the best of luck. Um, we're all wishing you the best of luck here. And if you ever need anything, you can bug Jackson for my, my contact information. I'm sure he will give it to you. A lot of people supported me, so I'm happy to tell you the secret is there is no secret and you have everything you need to succeed like in within you. That's great. Thanks, Amanda. Thank you all for being with us today. We'll be back again soon with another episode and uh, take care, everyone.